Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD, and now I'm going to do a tour of the auto rail flyout panel here well, underneath the ribbons. And I'm going to hit this little push pin to hold it open. And th these commands under here are also very powerful commands to help you with editing existing auto rail entities that you need to modify a little bit. If you use these commands, auto rail can keep track of what you're doing. So we first of all start with the bill of materials update which will update the cut list if you make changes. I'll, I'll extend a picket of this fence and show you what happens with that. And also if you insert items from the library. Now you can also if you insert your own custom items from that library. As long as you put your custom designs underneath the library files folder, AutoRail will add that to the cut list as well. Then we have this command here. It's called rail copy which is like the AutoCAD copy command, but with this one, AutoRail keeps track of what you're copying. The same thing for Rail Mirror, Rail Trim, and Rail Extend. We also have a real cool command called Rail Wipeout, and then this is the Customize box, and I'll click on that. And the next lesson, we will be going through this Customize box and show you what your customization features are and how to make changes and create extruded items or any special size tubings or channels. Uh, any custom shape uh, can be developed and incorporated into the AutoRail program. So we'll show you that some, on another lesson. Okay, so I say I want to extend the center picket of this fence to give it more strength. One command that you can use and auto will keep track of is a stretch command. So if I go in here and do a stretch, and I stretch this middle picket here, say, let's put on ortho, stretch it 12 inches. So I'll type 12 and enter. All right, so the cut list right now shows 18, 5, 8 square, 5 foot 9. So when I do a bill of materials update and I pick this part here, you notice now Instead of having 18, I have 17 pieces of tubing this long, and I have another piece that's a foot longer. So any changes that you make using the stretch command will be sensed and updated. You can also click on the item if you want to use the grips. I've got to hold my shift key down to light up both sides of this. And then just grab it and go down, say, I'll do 14 on this one. Okay, and then I'll go back and do a bill of materials update. When I do that, the number 17 will drop to 16, and we'll have two additional pieces. So now we have 16 pieces of tubing, one piece 6 foot 11, one piece 6 foot 9. Okay. While we're here looking at this fence, you notice that the pickets show through the channels here. So the rail wipeout command, what that does, you just click on that and pick this channel. I right? just cross through both of these and boom. It wipes out the channel area and it shows the picket here. Okay. Do the same thing at the bottom. So that's a, uh, it doesn't, you don't have to worry about trimming the pickets because if you trim the pickets, you lose all your data as far as what's, if you had to do a bill of materials update later on. If you're not going to do a bill of materials update, then you can just c continue on with this uh, and do it with uh, regular AutoCAD commands and make your make your changes. Okay, to show you the rail copy and the rail mirror command, I'm going to pan over here to uh, a gate I've drawn here. So here's a gate, half of a gate. And I'm going to do the rail copy command first, so I'll do rail copy. And now, the rail copy command works a lot like the AutoCAD copy command, but you got to watch the command line because there are some different prompts. So it's asking me if I want to copy an entire assembly or a piece. I right-click to pick piece. That was the default, and any time you see an item with a bracket around it, like here where it says same, this is the same unit, I just right click and it's, that's the default settings. I'll right click there and then at base point or displacement, I can just pick. The rest of it works just like the AutoCAD command would. And then I'll just type in say 14 inches here. And then I've set up a new piece and then it says, do you want to make another copy? And I just go over here and I just click no and I'm done. So now when I do the rail copy command, it'll add no. So now when I do the bill of materials update, it'll add that to the cut list. Now, 
the rail mirror command. So let's go in here. Let's erase these dimensions on the side here because I want to mirror this. So this would, these dimensions would get into the get in the way here. So I'm going to set up a reference line. I could use O track to do this, but I'm just going to do it this way under draw line. Say I want to have a half a one inch gap, so I'm going to go out a half inch this way. Then I'm going to go up and set a a reference point up here out of the way so I can easily see it when I do the rail mirror command. So I go to rail mirror and here it asks me do you want to mirror an entire assembly or a piece. Here the default is assembly because normally that's what you would do so I right click that. It says pick the rail assembly which is this gate here. I'll pick that. And this says specify location of vert vertical mirror line which is the same as you would do with a uh, AutoCAD command. And I'll left click on that and then it asks a similar question that AutoCAD does. Do you want to delete the source objects? Well, the default is no. We don't want to delete. And then it says if you want to add a new label to the gate assembly, I just right click there. And then there is your gate. And now here it updates automatically when you do the rail mirror command. 34 spears, two of each, additional channels at the bottom. Okay. So that's the rail copy and the rail mirror. Now, rail trim and rail extend. Now that, let's go here. There's a couple of neat things you can do with this. You know with the fence, we use the stretch command. You could use a rail extend command to extend something. Say for instance, you wanted to send this picket down to this step tread here. I can go to rail extend. I'll click that. And it says, you got to watch the command line here the number of boundary edges. Well the default is one and we're not trying to extend between two horizontal lines so I just right click select the boundary edge which is this line here and then all you have to do is pick one of the verticals and it'll extend the piece down just like that and then I'm done. Okay now let's go up here and say for instance we don't want to have this piece we don't want an extra piece here so we're going to erase that and we just want to extend the horizontal up we can do that so I'll go up here to the rail extend one boundary edge which is this here and then pick this piece there and boom it's extended and then I do a bill of materials update and it will add that longer picket Okay, and then it also will delete that little short piece that was up there. Rail trim works the same way as rail extend. It's like trim and extend. So I go rail trim. Do you want to break in two pieces or one? The default is one, so I just right click. I select a boundary edge, which is a cutting edge, which I say is this here. And then pick the piece you want to trim. And then it trims it back, just like that. And then I use Bill Materials Update. Now the reason you want to use, again, Rail Trim and Rail Extend is because that way AutoRail can keep track of what you're doing. So when you do a Bill of Materials Update, you'll have a valid cut list. One other thing, let me just show you something about the Rail, about the rail Wipeout Command. Normally you have a, I don't know if you knew this, but there is a, a Wipeout Command in regular CAD. So I can go over here and do it by just pointing, which it takes a little bit longer to do, but it does the same function. So if you don't have AutoRail, or the new version of AutoRail, you can do a rail wipeout this way. You can't do it with curves, but without rail wipeout you can. So I'll just click on this, and I'm going to click on this piece right there, and see it wiped out the curve. Now what we've actually done is we've broken this up in individual lines, straight lines, but it looks like it's still curved. So make sure that you take your radius dimensions before you wipe out these curves if you want to do that to make the gate look. I'll pick this. Okay. Now one other thing. Let's go back here to the, uh, let's draw a new fence real quick because I want to show you uh, something you need to do if you lay your pickets on top of the horizontal. So I'm going to import a template and I'm going to use the same wrought iron rail thing here. Okay, and I'll click draw. And I'm going to use default and use default and drop this fence in here. Put a cut list here. 
say that you lay stuff on top, say this was a, 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 a tubing or something, and you lay your pickets on top, then when you do the rail wipeout, instead of wiping out the channels, you'd wipe out the pickets. So it'd look like they're setting on top. Okay. The only problem you run into is when you get up here to these finials, that looks kind of weird. So what you need to do there is use the draw order command to set the pickets in front. So I go up here to the layout tools and I pick draw order and I'll select the objects which are all these spears and I just click front and now the spear sets in front the pickets laying on top of the, the channel or the horizontal rather than punching through so that's how you would do it when you're if you lay stuff on top and you're building uh, a fence or gate that way and if you have any further questions just feel free to call us on the 800 number on the screen and uh, be happy to answer those take care bye